Good evening, everyone. And uh, you can I, screen? Yeah. Where, where do you want me? If you go over just in front. Yeah, but I, I want to rush things here. So, oh, okay. are you doing it on Zoom? Yeah, we are. Okay. So, where do you want me? Uh, um, yeah. Could you swap with Barbara? <laughs> That's all right. That's okay. <laughs> here we go. So, whereabouts? Around here. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, right there. It's fine. Okay, great. <laughs> And you need the mic for the Zoom, right? Yeah. Yep, okay. Good evening, everyone, and great to be here to support uh, Sanjay and his visit to New Zealand. Not his first visit. He tells me he came here for the World Bank about 20 years ago, so uh, he, he, um, he knows us a, a little bit. Uh, when I left UNDP, I got an approach from Sanjay and his deputy, uh, Joe Powell, and they said, would you be an ambassador for us? Well, how can I say no? Uh, it, it, the partnership was formed after I left uh, government here. It was formed in 2011, and I can see that New Zealand was quite an early uh, mover in joining in 2013, which is, uh, which is good. Uh, I came to know of OGP through uh, UNDP, which was often a partner. Uh, in supporting the action plans uh, in developing countries where UNDP had offices and over the years I attended the odd uh, meeting, not odd at all actually, great meetings uh, of OGP. <laughs> I remember coming to Mexico, yes. uh, United Kingdom and yes. London uh, there was one uh, and then of course at the UN itself uh, uh, speaking on behalf of UNDP. So I think the, the global context is as Sanjay has put it, that democracy is taking a bit of a pounding at the moment. And you, you know, mentioned these forces, Sanjay, of uh, the the disinformation, the uh, the foreign interference. Uh, you know, even well-established uh, democracies like our own, obviously the United States, United Kingdom, we're, we're beset by various forces, forces of, of populism, uh, of extremism in political discourse, and I think we see that now to a degree that we uh, haven't necessarily seen for sustained periods in the past, we're assailed with conspiracy theorists, the anti-science people, uh, all of it building a distrust, if you like, between citizens, uh, let alone uh, the relationship or social contract you can have between uh, citizens and the, the state. So it's polluting public debate in our own country as well as in uh, a range of, of others. And we see it play out, don't we, on our, our social media. Uh, I'm a, a prolific <laughs> user of social media. You almost have to be full-time on patrol against trolls who want to uh, pollute uh, every comment stream that, that you have. Uh, of course, you know, relative, uh, our problems may not seem as great as some. We're not in a country where you know, free speech invites imprisonment. Uh, where being LGBTQI invites imprisonment and even death, uh, and so on. Uh, but you know, let's not think the pressures that democracy is under uh, in our world uh, are not pressures that uh, affect us. And we can, as Sanjay said, become complacent. And let's face it, we're always a bit prone to the she'll be right attitude here. Well, she won't be right unless there's uh, eternal vigilance, I guess, is the, is the message. Sanjay mentioned the lobbying issue, and I think it's got away from New Zealand. You know, regulation is most definitely uh, needed, and it's good that it's signalled that, uh, that it's coming. We need a law. You know, lobbyists were always there, but you tend to be able to identify them. It was Michael Thompson from the Tobacco Institute, or... Terry Dunleavy from the alcohol companies or, or whatever. But, but now it's the revolving door, isn't it, of, of people who have been the press secretaries and the political advisors and, and even ministers, for, for heaven's sake. I mean, we, we need legislation. We need cooling off periods. We need things that other democracies have put in place uh, to guard against uh, undue uh, uh, influence. Um, the political donations area has, I think, been polluting New Zealand for some time. And it's damn hard to fix, I can tell you, as one who tried to, uh, to fix it. Ask the US where, you know, there's supposed to be a cap on donations and they just form more political action committees. It's hard to fix. Um, but we have to uh, keep, uh, keep trying. Uh, so, you know, we can't just pretend that we don't have issues. We do have issues. And on the huge holes, I'm glad to see one of them 
that's identified in the current action plan for OGP here, which is the beneficial ownership issue. This is huge. You know, money can swill, swish in and out of this country to, to who knows who, from where to who. Uh, we don't know. Uh, it needs a very urgent action. And uh, I think um, if, if I look at the state of affairs in New Zealand, New Zealand would not be able to comply with the standard of the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, which I chair uh, globally, and which I do think, by the way, New Zealand would benefit uh, from joining. Uh, we do have, I think, about 1% of GDP comes off minerals, and there is still uh, resi residual oil and gas. These are always areas uh, that are problematic uh, globally, and the EITI standard requires every country implementing it uh, to have beneficial ownership uh, legislation of a certain standard. For heaven's sake, if Zambia and Uganda can attempt it, why couldn't we? You know, we are behind uh, uh, on this. And also worth noting that Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative is a partner organisation for OGP. They're actually quite closely linked, and it's not uncommon, Sanjay, in the countries which are members of both to see in the OGP action plan commitments that will help implement the EITI standards. So I think it is something that New Zealand should consider um, and uh, really urge people to you know, maybe think about how we might increase some interest in that uh, in, in New Zealand. But I think in the end, the main threats here are these threats of complacency, that we don't keep up with the times the need for regulation of lobbying, the need for uh, more scrutiny around and openness around the political donation issues, the, uh, the issues of, um, of beneficial ownership, uh, just a whole lot of things, I think, are, are nibbling away at us, and uh, we need to arrest them before they get truly chronic, which they can if you just let things slide. So she won't be right, is my message. Thank you. <laughs>